Innovate. Enable. Welcome to Nava Karnataka, a stage of continuous progress where today we focus on the issue of urban infrastructure, particularly when it comes to cities like Bangalore where the challenges are well known but more importantly key stakeholders from the government and the private sector are coming together to come up with viable solutions to ensure it is indeed a city for the future. Karnataka ranks third in terms of urban population. The state has already brought in a positive change in its urban management with urban reform initiatives and strategic interventions. Now, the state is looking to improve its urban infrastructure by upgrading connectivity, effective town planning and allowing investments in the sector. Let's get to know more about its course of action. And joining us now on the show is Mr. Mahendra Jain, who is Additional Chief Secretary, Urban Development and the Managing Director at Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation. Mr. Jain, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Let's start off with your primary portfolio, which is Urban Development and focus on the city of Bangalore, which is uh, bursting at the seams. Uh, and clearly, you have a challenge there on your hands. How are you and the government really looking at tackling this problem of urban infrastructure, uh, particularly in a city like Bangalore? Yeah, I mean, Bangalore has uh, really seen tremendous growth in the last couple of decades. The Bangalore Development Authority, which is the planning authority for Bangalore, has prepared the revised master plan where we have identified which will be the special development zone where we improve the mobility and uh, the transit oriented, oriented development so that the development happens mm -hmm. where our, uh, our transport corridors are. Uh, so this is the differential strategy of, uh, of the uh, city development where we don't want to intensify the city center further, we want to expand to the other areas. Right. The state government has been uh, uh, giving a lot of uh, focus and attention on, on, on Bangalore. Hmm. So if you see in the last three or four years, the allocation to the city for various projects, whether it is for uh, the road infrastructure or for the storm water drains, or for water supply, or for sewage treatment, or for environment. Uh, a lot of allocation, a lot of effort is being uh, made to improve the uh, amenities, the quality of life in Bangalore. So now let's focus on the already congested areas, areas in the southern and the southeastern part of Bangalore, such as Whitefield. How are you going to approach uh, these challenges? So a lot of focus is being given to the public transport of which metro is a very, very important component. After saturation of the electronic city and the uh, Whitefield area, now the new uh, software parks or IT industries are coming up on the outer ring road. Right. So we'll have a metro network by 2021 which will connect all these parts of the city. Okay. So that that will uh, really that should help the situation. Now you referred uh, to the metro. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how phase two will be different from phase one because phase one faced a lot of challenges, a lot of delays, fund overruns as well. Um, how will phase two be different? In phase two, what we have planned new is uh, uh, the on the outer ring road, uh, which I was telling you about, is a length of about 18 kilometers from Silk Board Junction to the K R Puram and more than half a million IT professionals are working on this corridor alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually it was not part of our plans at all. Right. Uh, but because of the demand by the IT industries in that area and the congestion on the roads there, there was a lot of demand that we take up that, that uh, stretch, but we, we hadn't thought of any financing plans. Mm -hmm. So the industries there have come forward to say that they will contribute for building this line. So what are the various uh, financing models that you are looking at, particularly when it comes to the private sector? We are uh, finding various ways of innovative financing mm -hmm. where through premium FSI, where people in the impact zone uh, within one kilometer uh, radius of the metro line, they can build more, they can have a, a higher FSI than what is otherwise permitted right. and that 
most of that money will come to fund the metro line. In different ways, we are trying to finance almost 25% of the cost of the project. We are hoping that it will come with innovative financing. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jain, uh, for uh, joining us, for sharing with us uh, so openly your plans. And we wish you all the very best from all of us. Karnataka, the aviation hub of India, is thriving with presence of aerospace companies in the state. It has seen major investments coming in from domestic and international companies. Airbus, a leading global aircraft manufacturing company, has a long-standing relationship with India with its manufacturing facilities based in Bengaluru. Let's take a look. And joining us now is uh, Dwarkanath Srinivasan, the president of Airbus uh, Commercial Operations here in India. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. And congratulations. Uh, it's been more than 40 years now uh, for Airbus uh, here in India. And of course, Karnataka was where it all began. And Absolutely. Since those starting days, uh, India now, if you look at the aviation market, is supposed to be one of the fastest growing markets in the world. What's the potential that you see in this market uh, for a company such as yours? You're absolutely right. Our journey with India started in 1976, you know, when we delivered our first A300 to the then Indian Airlines. In fact, India was the second country from Asia for having put faith on Airbus. And from then on, we grew with all the private airlines as well. If you look at India in terms of the aviation growth, the last three years we have grown at a rate of 20%. Uh, year on year. That's a tremendous growth. What made you hone in on Karnataka those those many years ago when nobody had really thought of Bangalore, uh, you know, let alone as an IT capital uh, or even an aerospace capital? So if you look at the really good government research and uh, development establishments for aerospace and defense, many of them have headquarters in Bangalore, whether it is HAL, NAL, ISRO, mm -hmm. GTRE, the gas turbine research establishment, all of them have roots here that really stimulated the aerospace research environment. And we also have great institutions like Indian Institute of Science who do a lot of research in aerospace as well. So there was an ecosystem. There, there was embedded. the necessary ingredients to start the aerospace and defense you know, work in India. In fact, okay. you made a statement which would make, uh, I think, all our ministers across both center and state uh, very happy. You said make in India is the central plank of uh, your strategy here. Coming back, I think, for Airbus, we are committed. And uh, make in India is at our heart of the strategy. And what we mean by that is that we are there to help develop aerospace and aviation ecosystem in the country. Mm -hmm. And that means we are focusing on engineering and information management. That's one area. We are looking at how do we support our customers in terms of aviation, pilot training, maintenance training, uh, and also daily operations for our customers. The third pillar of our strategy is aerospace partnerships. That's mm -hmm. where all the manufacturing and the different suppliers come in, what sort of partnership. And our fourth pillar is R&T and innovation. So, yes, making India is at the heart of our strategy. Now. Right. So, um, and, you know, you know, take us through what the future looks like. As you said, you began here in Bangalore and all your investments appear to be paying off, both in terms of the kind of growth you've seen in the aviation market and the manufacturing base that you've set up here. Uh, do you see yourself at some point in the future actually expanding that even further, particularly on the manufacturing side, perhaps sometime in the future actually having an assembly line over here? What I will do is I'll also talk about Airbus aspirations. On one side, we've been working with our partners, but about 10 to 11 years ago, what we did is that we came to India to look at what do we need to do, you know, what, how we can actually have good partnership. That's when we saw, we saw that India produces a lot of engineers, and they're very good at maths and physics. They may not have aerospace experience, but that was not a problem for us because we said, let's set up our own captive center in Bangalore. And today we have about 600 people working in that center. But beyond that, we have also have two dedicated centers with two of our partners, one for the wings and mm. the other one for the fuselage of the aircraft. Right. So about 1,000 people from those partners work for us. So overall, about 2,000 people in engineering work for uh, Airbus. And outside of Europe, for the engineering services, India contributes the maximum, you know, for mm -hmm. Airbus. You know, over here with the industry looking at an alternative to the IT 
growth story. Uh, do you see this as being a viable alternative as far as employment is concerned and really spearheading the next wave of growth? Absolutely. Now, if you look at it, you know, as part of our engineering center here, we also have an innovation group which really looks into the future. Today, uh, engineering and information management, they're coming together for the future of uh, aerospace aircraft growth. So then, what is a better place than Bangalore? You know, you, it's an aerospace capital, it's an IT capital as well, and that way, I think for India, Bangalore is poised. But as you rightly said, it is very important that the government makes the right policies to really capitalize the existing position of, uh, of right. Bangalore to move forward. Okay, thank you so much for giving us a glimpse into the future, into what your company has been doing and we really hope that you take off together to give uh, wings to some of those uh, viewpoints that you've shared with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Right there, you heard it uh, from the chief of Airbus uh, here, heading its commercial operations. Uh, Bangalore still remains a hot spot and they've got uh, big plans afoot. We'll be back with more insights on the show. Stay with us. You're watching Nava Karnataka, Stage of Continuous Progress. Welcome back to Nava Karnataka, a state of continuous progress where we continue to focus on the issue of urban infrastructure as Bangalore continues with its daily struggle of coping and coming up with the solution. But plans are afoot on how to make the city more livable and a better place for all its citizens. Let's listen in to some of its key stakeholders. And joining us now on the show is Mr. Manjunath Prasad, who is the Commissioner of the BBMP, which is the Municipal Corporation right here in Bangalore. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, take us through uh, what are the immediate challenges? We know BBMP is, unfortunately, the uh, all blame is laid at the BBMP's doorsteps when it comes to the state of the city of Bangalore. But there are many other institutions involved as well. When you took over, uh, what were the challenges that you faced and how do you look at them now? See, Bangalore Municipal Corporation uh, is one corporation in the country which is very big in size. Uh, now, the issues are manifold. Uh, if you okay. ask me which is the biggest uh, challenge uh, as far as the Municipal Corporation is concerned, uh, see, every day we generate about, uh, the city generates about 5,700 metric tons of uh, garbage. Right. It, it is divided into two categories. One is the bulk generator. Bulk mm -hmm. generator means all those commercial establishments, uh, hotels, uh, and right. big uh, apartments, more than uh, 50 apartments, they are known as bulk generators. Uh, hmm. They generate about 1,500 tons of uh, garbage. Uh, and other than those bulk generators, we have uh, other the, the, the households, whatever we the uh, individuals. Get us, it's about 4,200 tons. Uh, right. Now the issue is, uh, how do you, uh, I mean, uh, convince the citizens? Uh, to segregate this waste uh, so that mm. the processing will become uh, easier. Uh, so this is the challenge that we are facing. Uh, so it seems like you have the processes, processes in place. Is there. Yeah, I However, mean, uh, is it the problem that the volume is simply too large? Are people not cooperating or are the funds insufficient? Now, as I told you, this uh, cleaning of uh, streets, uh, sweeping of streets is uh, not a problem. Mm. Collecting the waste from the households is not a problem. The problem lies with the processing. Uh, I see. So how do you process? I mean, as I told you, to process this waste, we have set up the compost plants. Mm. Now, every day there is a problem in compost plant because people want to shed these plants. Mm. And they say that you take away all those plants outside the outside city. Outside the city, right. Now, now, the rural areas, outskirts of Bangalore, they ask, why are you bringing your Bangalore garbage to rural areas? Absolutely. So, I mean, you, you, it should be your responsibility. So, do you think uh, it is the case, so clearly garbage disposal is, is a huge problem? but you are trying to come up with viable See, solutions. We, uh, we, we are trying to come up with viable solutions. Number one is that, uh, I mean, we are in the process of setting waste to energy plants. Uh, mm -hmm. Although the cabinet has already given approval for about three plants, so one has already work has started. That may take about two years. Uh, so right. when once waste to energy plants are there, directly all this uh, garbage, uh, whether you segregate or you don't segregate, that will go to waste to energy plants. Uh. Indeed. Uh, but all of this requires substantial yeah. funds. We know the state government has increased <coughs> the allocation, I think 8,000 crores for us. Funds uh, are never a problem. Uh, funds, uh, I mean, if you look at uh, the citizens, uh, Bangalore citizens, uh, they ask, uh, we give taxes, uh, what the corporation is doing. But if right. you look at the garbage uh, disposal uh, this one, uh, system, 
the citizens of Bangalore, what they give us about 42 crores is the yearly cess that we collect. Hmm. And what we spend is about 800 crores. Oh. So, I mean, uh, we tried to increase the cess on uh, garbage collection, but that was, there was a lot of uh, opposition. So, uh, what are your viable means then of creating alternate sources of revenue? Because there will always be this shortfall as the city continues to grow. Uh, will it always be reliance on the state government? Are you looking at other innovative means? See, one of the best things that we have done, uh, I mean, uh, in the last uh, two years after I took over uh, charge, uh, we have mapped each and every property in Bangalore in a, a very robust uh, geographical information system, uh, which is known as uh, JEPTIS. Uh, so, thus, uh, at the click of the mouse, uh, I can locate any property in Bangalore on my uh, computers. Uh, and uh, click of the uh, mouse, I can uh, get which all the properties which are not paying their taxes, uh, how much they have paid, how much is arrears, mm -hmm. who are the top 10 defaulters, who are the top 100 defaulters. Uh, by bringing this IT intervention, uh, we have infused our tax collection. I see. So, I mean, about 3-4 years back, it was 1,200 crores. Uh, today, mm -hmm. it is uh, 2,000, almost it is uh, doubled. Right. So, still there is a lot of potential. Uh, Mr. Prasad, many thanks for joining us uh, and we wish you all the very best. It is indeed a t challenging assignment, but so far we can see those changes coming along the board and we hope uh, to see many more. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And continuing with the theme of uh, urban development and planning, joining us now is the Commissioner of the Bangalore Development Authority of BDA, Mr. Rakesh Singh. Mr. Singh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, it's been about a year into your role uh, in the BDA. Uh, first, explain to our viewers, what is the scope of work that the BDA undertakes as opposed to the better known uh, BBMP? These are basically parallel institutions for the city wherein the basic development of any area is undertaken by BDA and once the level of development reaches a particular stage which includes the regular infrastructure of drainage, roads, mm -hmm. electrification, sites development and then it is handed over to BBNP. When you look at uh, the planning of the city and going forward as there is likely to be further pressure with the influx of migration coming in, uh, how do you as an institution plan for these kind of inflows? Uh, we are in the process of finalizing the revised master plan which will be valid up to 2031 and this master plan we have taken two, three very innovative steps to undertake or to address the issue of congestion and uh, uh, right placement of buildings and roads. The basic thing what we have done is that we have addressed the issue of floor area ratio, that mm -hmm. FAR. So we have divided the entire city into two zones. In zone A, that is the central zone, we have tried or suggested to have an FAR which will be the same which was there earlier. And in the outskirts, we are increasing it. This is the proposal because BDA happens to be the planning authority for Bangalore but ultimately it has to be accepted and approved by the government. So right. we have finalized the report subject to the court's view. It will be seeing the light of the day very soon. Right. And it has addressed all these issues of fresh road network, widening of roads, the metro connectivity, the bus connectivity and the FAR. In terms of forward planning to ensure when Bangalore is moving at such a breakneck speed to address the transport connectivity issues. Currently the city faces a huge problem but going forward with phase 2, phase 3 you are working together with all the institutions involved to ensure that it's integrated. This RMP 31 has been done with integration of all these institutions which mm -hmm. you just named. Right. And another effort has been taken that what you see in European countries that trying to see that a particular area has its people working in that area and all facilities like hospital, school, entertainment is planned accordingly. In terms of the BDA itself and the reforms uh, uh, that it's looking at, you mentioned the vision document uh, for 2031. Uh, 
in terms of bringing in more technology, making processes online. What are some of these changes that you're looking to implement? The Government of India initiative of ease of doing business has been fully accepted and implemented in BTA. Only one aspect is still pending, this approval of building plans. There's a provision that we have a planning department and all the building plans in the PDA area, they have to come. We wanted to get it online. We have not been able to do it by now, mm -hmm. but I'm sure by end of March, this aspect of ease of doing business will also be implemented. Right, uh, Mr. Singh, many thanks for joining us. I think clearly you're setting up those building blocks to ensure that the future, as far as uh, the development of the city is concerned, is far more methodical, planned, and on that right direction. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of this special coverage on the urban infrastructure problems of the city of Bangalore. Beautiful legacy, but of course uh, with huge challenges to surmount. We'll be back with more insights on our episode next week. Until then, thanks for catching this special series, Nava Karnataka, a state of continuous progress, only on CNBC TV 18. Innovate. Innovate.